In today's video, we're testing out a bunch of food hacks that have gone viral on Instagram to see if they really work. In case you guys didn't know, this shirt is currently on sale for a limited time only. If you're a fan of the channel and have been wanting to get some merch, now is the time. Go ahead and click the link in the description and let's get this video started. Well, this is a weird group of stuff. Yeah, this is lunch. I was thinking avocados, bacon, yeah. bread, and eggs. Actually, you probably couldn't. As a candle. Avocado toast with bacon and eggs. That does sound like... Wrap it all up in the t-shirt and you got some flowers for ambiance. Great. I don't know about Sprite as a drink to go with breakfast. No. Yes. What's happened is several people have sent us an Instagram video that I believe originated with Blossom and has been passed around to a bunch of other sites and Instagram accounts at this point. Uh, and they're all food hacks. Interesting or strange things you can do with food that are not eating them. I prefer eating them, but apparently there's other good things and we want to test a lot of those today. Here's the basic idea. We've had lots of people request that we test out several of these hacks to see if they're actually viable or if they're complete nonsense. I think some of them will work and some of them won't, but we're gonna have to see which is which. The first video that we're talking about, it shows using eggshells, flour, water, and food coloring. You blend it all up in a blender into sort of this paste. You take that paste, put it in a lip balm container, and then it shows drawing on a chalkboard with it as though it were like you a pastel like a, a or something. You have like a roll up chalk. I guess. The texture seemed like it was maybe more like a pastel than, a, mm -hmm. than chalk because it does have liquid in it originally. I'm just curious because they like piped it into yeah. the chapstick, but then they like were extruding it like it was a stick of some kind. Dries, so maybe it dries or yeah, cures somehow the flour in it might congeal or something like that. So the next one, we have two different loaves of bread here. Apparently you can take moldy bread and you can use it to sort of remove marks on your wall. Now we're pretty sure that the mold isn't necessary because they actually cut the mold off of it. We think that they just don't want to waste food. So we will use a couple of slices of fresh bread today just to see if it works and then Sorry, we will be leaving some of it out over the weekend to see if the moldiness makes any difference. The next one is the idea that you can take grease from bacon and make a functional candle out of it that doesn't smell like bacon. So the thought is that you put cloves and cinnamon mixed in with the bacon grease, you add a candle wick, and then the cloves and cinnamon just somehow get rid of the bacon smell. We're gonna try it, so we've got two pounds of bacon, we're gonna cook all that up, collect all the grease, put it in this jar, and we'll see, we'll make that candle, we'll let it cool over the weekend, that'll have two purposes. One, the bacon grease will cool down all the way. Two, the bacon smell will go out of the house, we'll actually have like a good comparison to tell like, oh, are we really smelling bacon grease when we light this candle? For our next one, we are going to try and dye fabric with avocados. Now the idea here is that avocados actually contain tannins and tannins contain a red sort of pigment. In fact, that's a lot of the reason why a lot of wines have a red color. You'll look at the tannin content of wine a lot of the time. It, it produces sort of a dryness. However, it also is very, very red. I didn't believe this for avocado, so I actually looked it up and it actually is true. Avocados, not just the flesh itself, but the pits contain a little over 13% tannin. That's a lot. So avocado pits, not good for eating, maybe good for dyeing t-shirts? I mean, you could eat them, but you get a really dry mouth. The skin has some red tint as well. So we will be putting both the skin and the pits into a jar full of water. We'll be adding in our white fabric and hopefully should dye it pink. The last myth that we're gonna test is the idea that you can use flat soda, Sprite specifically was used in the video, to restore wilted roses. These roses are not quite wilted. So our plan is we're actually just going to wait until they wilt a little bit and then mm. we're going to try pouring in the flat Sprite. I don't know if you guys have ever had freshly cut flowers, but if they start to wilt, you just add a couple tablespoons of sugar into the water and it does help them perk up. So once they wilt, I actually want to do a control test. I want to have some that are in soda and some that are just in sugar water. See the difference. I like that plan. All right. <laughs> I think that's a little bit thicker. I'm still just gonna let it sit out and dry for a bit before putting it in the bag and then putting it in the chapstick container. Now our bread. This bread is entirely too good. We need not good bread. It's not moldy. So we're gonna touch all of the bread, expose it to germs. 
and then we're not going to eat it afterward. That one's done. Phones, notoriously unclean. It's been, yes, a long time. It's been a weekend. A so. weekend. Uh, and things have progressed, some more than others. Our roses have begun to wilt nicely. The necks are all bent over, so I think mm -hmm. those are perfect for testing if our Sprite will revive them. And you wanted to test a side-by-side -side of Sprite versus just sugar water, see if I there's do. any difference. I'm gonna go ahead and say the next one, you're a uh, I do shocked. not know what has happened here. So. The, the top of this, which just like has come completely separated, this is like hardened. And then the inside. Oh. Which probably oh, smells oh. bad. Oh. It smells like rotten egg. I'm just getting a terrible smell. That's oh. just still a liquid. Oh no. Mush. Just here's our stick, our goop in a container. Oh, oh look at that. Look at how well that doesn't work. Okay, so I'm not gonna say that it's impossible 100% to make some sort of chalk with this stuff, some sort of color pastel, but whatever they gave was certainly not enough instruction because this has turned into like a semi-coagulated flower grossness, like that has mm -hmm. no chalk-like consistency. I remember making chalk as a kid. It was super easy. You would take, I don't know if you guys remember, push pops, like the, the frozen push pops, like ice cream pops. And you would you would push out the ice cream and you would eat it and then you would have that little roll or the little piece of cardboard, and it was a uh, a cornstarch mix and you could make homemade chalk. It was really cool. This this seems way too complicated. There you Don't go. Even Look at how stick. that's great, perfect, done. Hey guys, remember how we said that tannins will dye things a pink color? Guess what? Again, not enough instructions. Nate, what went wrong here? Um, so I've done some research. You can dye cloth pink using avocado pits and, and I skins. And I did say that. Yes, I did, you did because of the tannins. Mm -hmm. However, there's this, a, there, a crucial step. You need heat. And even in the original video, if you look carefully, you can see that their pot is sitting on a stove. It doesn't boil, but it's You there. don't ever see any evidence of the stove being turned on or steam or bubbles or anything like that. I think we are going to try the correct method to see how well it works and how it's not the same color seen in that other video, but we're gonna try it. We're just gonna boil some pits and skins for like 45 minutes, see how much color we can get out, and we'll see what it looks Boiled like. Boiled pit shirts. Exactly. Bacon grease candle. Kind of smells like bacon grease mixed with cinnamon and cloves, huh? No, all I got was bacon, and I stuck my nose like right on I'm, that. that I'm was getting it. hints of the other things, but the question is what it's like when it's burning, so I say we need to, let's trim that oh, okay, wick. Okay, I found it. Which is obviously what was gonna happen, but yeah. hopefully there's enough mixed in. Let's trim the wick, let's light the candle, and see what it smells like. I just think that, you know, because with a candle, if you leave it burning for a while, like it melts the top layer and stuff. Mm -hmm. If that happens with this, our wick might just fall right over, because Bacon grease clearly does not solidify as much as candles do in just room temperature. Let's see what beautiful smell we're getting. Mmm, nothing. Very light bacon grease. Give it, let's just give it a while to get going yeah. and see if anything comes out of that. Yep. How's our bread? Uh, okay, guys, this is the... Remarkably unmoldy looking. So we're just gonna give this a few more days to really get moldy before we do our test because we really want to try and make it as much like the video as possible. Would you like a piece? Ah, uh, no. Goodness, no. There may not be visible mold, but that doesn't mean nothing's gone wrong with it. Our flat soda already has just the sugar, the corn syrup dissolved into it. I'm gonna warm up the water, dissolve the sugar itself, and then add some cold water. Room temperature water is what you want your flowers in. Cold is, you know, good too, but it doesn't work quite as well. That should be just fine. All right, so the size of the glass container isn't gonna matter. So the smaller one is our sugar water. This is going to be Sprite mixed with water. All right, in the video, that's probably at least as much as they showed right there. So let's see if these roses come magically back to life. It does smell like a candle. Like you can definitely smell the bacon grease, but it just sort of smells like generic table candle. 
handle. I don't know. Not a good cinnamon smell, not a good clove smell, not no. a strong bacon I mean, smell. Obviously, it all just sort of soaked to the bottom. It is good to know that the bacon smell isn't overwhelming. This is really kind of a cruddy Barely medium. Burning. Nate, how many weeks has it been? A long <laughs> time. So, I got this bread because I've had times in the past where it went moldy before its expiration date. So we thought, oh, this will be great. It'll go moldy quick, especially because we're gonna like touch it and rub it on stuff. The expiration date on this bread was June 4th. The day that we're filming this, it is currently July 3rd. Now this bread, this is the one that we touched a lot. Finally went it moldy. It did eventually get moldy in some spots. All right, well that piece is entirely made of mold. Good. Oh, that smells horrible. This so that's, was your choice. That's too moldy. So we want a piece with some mold on it and then to get rid of that. Oh, oh boy, lots oh, of mold on the oh, inside. Oh good, good. So we are going to try yep. cutting off the moldy part with a circle cup because... We're gonna take some of our good bread too as the control test and see if just a, a piece of regular good bread is gonna work. Apparently the gluten absorbs the scuffs. <laughs> ha, your feeble non-moldy bread does nothing. Actually it did. It made a big mess on the floor. <laughs> All right. I'm, Let's try your moldy bread. I've got some pretty authentic looking scuffs down here. I've got a little bit there, a couple here, here. Previously moldy bread. Come on, gluten, do your thing. Curse you, gluten. This is unmoldy bread. Try the one that I, I kicked the wall earlier. Absorb the gluten. Oh, this up here? Yeah, that was my kick. Hey, that actually took a little bit of it off. Hey, good. So if it's a uh, rubber shoe scuffs, maybe it does a little bit. Darn you, Nike, for being too good. Nike, that'll be $12,000. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, guys, don't do this. I think if it's the right kind of scuff, if it's a rubber shoe, yes. like a black rubber scuff. It did take off the one little scuff from my shoes. What I had to really kick the wall to make that happen. Maybe just don't kick your walls. More shoe scuffs on the wall. Bread? <laughs> Technically, it kind of works a little bit. Mold does not seem to make any difference, positive or negative. You make a mess with a lot of bread that we now have to vacuum up out of our carpet. And now our entire studio smells like moldy bread. Now in the original video, as we saw, it dyed it like a neon highlighter pink. It was so bright. And this is the result we get. We boiled this for hours. This was a white shirt. So we yep. did get a dye. However, this is like the least consistent dye ever. This shirt looks horrible. Like we've got dark red spots, Look at maroon this. spots. That. that just looks like I rolled in a pile of rust or something. There's some avocado like bits still stuck to this. And we don't know how well this would hold the dye if we washed it, but. I'm not gonna try just rinsing a corner in this. This thing. is, yeah, this Hang is on. not the neon pink that was shown in the video. Like that was clearly Faked. You can get a sort of pink, somewhat orangey color from avocado, and it could actually be a really cool color. Yeah, it's why not? It's just not a neon pink. Plus, you know, cloth dye is really cheap. Pretty easy to use. We let our flowers sit in our sugar and spray water for eight hours, and we got time lapses to see what they did. So this is how they started. Fairly wilted looking roses. Let's see what happens to them. <laughs> You can see a little bit of movement on this flower here, not a lot. They do pick back up a little bit, but it's very minor. Yeah, a little bit of movement in the leaves, a fair bit of movement in the petals, but in terms of lifting, like straightening back up, honestly, I suspect that for the original video, they just let flowers wilt and then reversed it because it's gonna look pretty much the same on a time lapse. I don't really think that the Sprite did more than the sugar. It looks about the same to me. They're at slightly different angles, so you can't see exactly the change, but I think that the sugar worked just as well as the Sprite. To get our roses properly, like, limp, dead looking, we actually let them sit out of water for a while. So I'm not going to say that this conclusively proves that Sprite is ineffectual, but I think it's decent evidence for the idea that Sprite is not like some magic flower restorer and it's gonna work about as well as just adding a teaspoon of sugar into the water for the flowers. Uh, and either way, by the time that your flowers have started wilting, you know, these are cut flowers, they're not gonna live forever anyway. So will Sprite help bring flowers back? Maybe a little bit, but if they've wilted when already sitting in water, I don't think there's much you can do for them at that point. 
So guys, I would call that pretty well debunked. The moldy bread definitely debunked. Guys, people keep making videos where they show these implausible or impossible things. We're very happy to test them out. Keep sending them to us. Uh, Instagram is a great way to send them. You can comment or you can send a direct message to the King of Random account. We'll also talk to you on our Discord. I play a lot of video games. I am attached to Discord 24-7. Guys, there is a TKOR Discord. We will attach the link in the description below. You can send us videos. She'll see the Discord stuff. I'll see stuff on the King of Random subreddit. Reach Reddit, us like that. Discord. You'll find us. And then you can also use Instagram. Good <laughs> stuff. Let us know what else you want to see debunked. Guys, that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. Click the box up at the top to watch our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.